Hello, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful episode of CUDA Education. Uh, today, what we are going to talk about is um, Vulcan versus OpenGL. So uh, for those of you that uh, don't know, OpenGL is sort of the foundational, the most common computer graphics programming language there is. Um, it is open source for the most part, and it is used by many different computing systems. Um, it's, it's freely available, all that good stuff. And it's historically been the go-to language or framework for when you want to put pixels on a screen and generate computer graphics, right? Uh, in recent times, uh, the same group that's responsible for OpenGL has also released a new language called Vulkan. And if you, you know, search, search on online, uh, the word on the street is, or the, the general vibe that, you, or reaction that you get from the programming community is that Vulkan is a difficult language and it's uh yeah it's a difficult language i i beg to differ um but you know it's it's only my opinion uh the the, the main reason vulcan exists and in my opinion why it is a superior language and a language that you should learn going forward if you're interested in computer graphics is number one the Vulkan language is built with GPU processing in mind so you know like I just said OpenGL is a foundational language it's open source it's the everyman language but OpenGL at its at its core and at its in its inception it was it was built with the CPU in mind, um, you know, pretty much before the dawn of, of the popularity of GPUs, right? That's, that's the, the vibe, that's the understanding that, that I get, that OpenGL, um, you know, it, it, it was just something that the CPU would run, single-threaded, didn't really have um, a GPU in mind or modern GPU architectures in mind. And Vulkan, not only is it a, a new language that's built from the ground up, but it, it's, it has parallel processing, it has the GPU in its design, and it, it gives you, you know, more granular access to, to GPU architectures, things of that nature. OpenGL sort of, you know, because it, it's been a victim of its history, you know, kind of like, uh, anyway, I, I won't get into it, but it, it's been a victim of, of too much history. So what that means is as time has changed, as devices have evolved, ha as, as, you know, and, and in technology, things change all the time, uh, you get the feeling that in OpenGL, there was a lot of, um, you know, copy and pasting and crazy gluing things together to make it to work. And what you get in the community is, is people are saying, yeah, um, you do have the functionality in OpenGL to do this, that, and the other, but um, the, the functions or the means by which you're doing it, it's, it, it's saying it does one thing, but it's really doing something else, but it's achieving what you want it to achieve by, through a roundabout manner. And in, in layman's terms, what that basically means is that it's, it's um, more complexity, it's extra processing, and um, it's, it's, it's not doing what you really think it's doing. You know, once you start getting into drivers and and, uh, you know, abstracting processes to manage new realities and all that stuff. It's, it's, it, it gets messy really quick. 
and um, you don't necessarily have that control. So with Vulcan being created from scratch, um, being created with the GPU architecture, the chipset, streaming multiprocessors, all that good stuff, parallelism, you know, and, and all the things that come with parallel processing, being created inception, it's, it's sort of a clean slate, it's a clean sheet, and um, it also, you know, it, 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 it also gives you more, more control and functionality and granularity. And, and it's because it gives you that control and functionality and detail and granularity why people are saying, oh, Vulkan is, is more difficult than OpenGL. And, you know, in, in that regard, you could, you could say so, right? You could, it, it sort of go, go figure. I mean, the more control you give someone, instead of it being a single, single button, you're, 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 you know, you have to press 10 buttons. Yeah, it's, it's more complex, but it's, it's a necessary evil and it is, um, and it is a future, uh, you know, for those of you that are interested in computer graphics and, and interested in, in going into industry, the reality is that OpenGL is old news, Vulkan is new news. If, if you want to get a job in computer graphics, if you want to um, be marketable in computer graphics, really and truly, it doesn't make sense to waste time on OpenGL. It, it, it's a much smarter move to learn Vulcan, because it is the future and um, it is the way to go. And, and even with all the, the, the new granularity and the new detail and the new functionality, might as well you learn it from now because that's where the market is going. And, and the reason for the detail and the granularity and the functionality and, and, and you know, having to really piece things together brick by brick is because at the end of the day, everyone is interested in squeezing out the maximum performance out of their GPU or out of their hardware, you know, their graphics chipset or what have you. And you can't really do that if you don't have low level detailed control over your application and over the, the hardware, right? Um, so, that's that's pretty much my my take on the whole thing. I I do have tutorials on OpenGL. It's more into the introductory tutorials on OpenGL, um, but I will I'm I'm going to start focusing my energy on Vulkan because that's just the future. the The biggest analogy I could give you is is in um, internal combustion engines and electric cars, right? So you're not going to build a more efficient, a more reliable internal combustion engine than Toyota or Honda, right? You're just not. They, these guys have been at it for years. Um, you know, they, they, they know how these engines run in the cold weather and hot weather and lukewarm weather and, you know, rainy, snow, whatever, right? If you want to... Um, have a chance at competing with or in the automobile industry, your best bet is to focus your energy on electric cars or electric powertrain, right? Um, because not only is the market going in that direction because of pollution and what have you, but it's also new, which means that no one is necessarily the expert yet. So you have a shot in the dark of actually getting a, 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 a stronghold in the market and being someone. And, you know, I think, I think that's the card that Tesla is playing, right? They, they, have, they have gone into, you know, they are building electric cars and, and trying to usher in the, the new era and what have you. So it's, it's the same thing with, you know, computer graphics, you know. There, there are several OpenGL programmers out there. The market is saturated. Um, yes, the in terms of the the ecosystem is 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 very much uh, installed for OpenGL. But really and truly, to differentiate yourself and prepare yourself for the future, you have to 
you have to, to start learning and get a heads up on what, what's next before it becomes mainstream, right? Before it becomes a standard issue. And, you know, that's why I would say I would encourage people to seriously just, you know, expend the, the time and effort to, to learn Vulcan and, you know, get, get in that direction. Um, and and you're, dealing with, you're dealing with technology in the purest sense, right? And we all know that technology changes fast, right? Um, you know, just as a, on a tangent, uh, you know, you do have other things like Direct 3D uh, from Microsoft. And that, of course, is exclusive to the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, you know, it's Microsoft. I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, Microsoft is, is you know, they, they have the resources and what have you. And they have, they have also been, especially as it relates to NVIDIA and ray tracing and stuff, they have, they have in many respects been the, the leaders in ray tracing technology and making it accessible to, um, to everyone, right? They, they, have the, um, they have the intellectual uh, property, they have the know-how, the knowledge, they, they have the research, they have the funds to do the research. So anything dealing with the latest in computer graphics, ray tracing, you know, Microsoft is, is going to have it. And, and I've seen it with, with Insight Graphics. So Insight Graphics is NVIDIA's uh, graphics profiling and debugging tool. And in order to, to uh, work with, with ray tracing, uh, currently the only the only API that you could do or use with that is is Direct 3D, which is from Microsoft. So go figure. I, I'm sure you know in the future they'll have other APIs that work with it or what have you. But you know Microsoft is is well funded and you know it's Microsoft, so you know that's also something you can consider. Although personally, I would say you know Vulkan is it. That would be the first priority, and then Direct 3D may be second priority. But um, yeah, you know, computer graphics, holograms, virtual reality, augmented reality. You know, there's there's a lot there's a lot uh, always video games. You know, there's there's a lot to apply computer graphics to in terms of its future. So you know, it's 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 definitely something to consider. If you are brand new to the game, brand new to programming, brand new to computer graphics, and you're looking for something that um, makes you marketable, uh, yeah, definitely pay attention to CUDA Education, CUDAeducation.com. Um, you know, I will be going down the Vulcan road myself, and as I learn, you learn, and that's pretty much, you know, the way it's going to be. Um, yeah, I I do have a I do have a tutorial up um, about using CUDA with OpenGL. So CUDA is Nvidia's proprietary programming language for the GPU, right? And pretty much what you do is you um, you send things over to the to the CUDA kernel. Um, you know, heavy processing over to the CUDA kernel, and then the CUDA kernel is supposed to return whatever whatever things it needs, whatever things OpenGL needs in order to render on the screen. So um, I do have experience with OpenGL. I do have experience with CUDA, definitely experience with CUDA. So I do have a frame of reference, um, you know, and, you know, for the most part, it works. You know, it, it, it works, but, um, you know, I, I guess the, the problem is is just that um at least on the open GL side you, you don't you just don't have as much control as maybe Vulcan will give you. I mean you do have the ability to to launch CUDA kernels and all that, but still, you know, so yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it guys. I hope you um hope you learned something with this video. Um and uh yeah. Uh, definitely pay attention to CUDAeducation.com. 
I have a I have a lot of lot of things going on. I have um the the profiling and debugging tools from from Nvidia Insight Systems, Insight Graphics, Insight Compute. You know, I have that that channel going, and then of course this Vulcan channel that I'm going to start doing, um, and then just general CUDA stuff. Um, CUDA graphs is is the new big thing from Nvidia. Um, you know, so a lot of work to be done in 2020. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I might get back into um, Jets and Xavier stuff and object detection, but, you know, realistically, I can't, I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't pursue all these lanes all at once. There's, it's just too much. Um, so I will have to prioritize, but definitely top of list, in my opinion, is Vulcan. It's new. It's uh, a lot of opportunity in that space. Uh, a lot of people want to want to get into it. Yeah. So uh, this is what the second of January, going into the third of January. I wish everyone a very happy and safe 2020, and most importantly, a productive 2020. Um, I hope you have your goals set out, and you're going to work towards achieving them in 2020. Um, and you know, I, as I always say, time is expensive. Time is very, very expensive. So don't waste it. Uh, use it for, for, you know, reaching your goals, for improving yourself, being better than who you are today. All right. This is Kuda Education. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.